Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. We have an electrical failure and need to land now. How would you handle this situation if it happened to you? Let me show you how we can use the G-1000 with an alternate takeoff procedure. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Sivers. Welcome back. In today's video, I will go over takeoff alternates. I will first go over what a takeoff alternate is and why it's required in certain IFR situations. We'll then hop into the Cessna 172, set up the G1000 for our takeoff alternate. Now keep in mind that this procedure can also be done in the GNS 530 as well as the G3000. However, we're going to stick to the G1000 for today. Once we have completed that, we will then take to the sky, simulate a failure, and then I will show you how to use the G1000 with the takeoff alternate to bring our aircraft safely to the ground. In the past, this type of procedure was not really practiced in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and the main reason was we never had any aircraft that had failures. However, with the advent of all of the new third-party developers with hundreds of failures, I think now is about as good time as any to practice our alternate takeoff procedures. Before we go any further, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot, so I will not be going over any other procedures throughout the duration of this flight. The aim of this series is to help you understand the G1000 and all of its features. If you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. A takeoff alternate is an airport that an aircraft can land at if it's necessary to do so shortly after takeoff and the departure airport is unavailable. A takeoff alternate is required in certain circumstances such as weather conditions or your return to departure is not possible. Now let's take a look at the electronic code of federal regulations, Title 14, Part 135, no person may take off an aircraft under IFR from an airport where weather conditions are at or above takeoff minimums, but are below authorized IFR landing minimums unless there is an alternate airport within one hour's flying time at normal cruising speed in still air of the airport of departure. All right, before we jump into the cockpit of the 172 and start programming this, I first want to go over the flight plan that we're going to use for today. And I also want to show you how I go about choosing my alternate takeoff airport. If we take a look at our flight plan, the closest airport along our flight plan that would have an ILS or an RNAV is going to be right here, which is KTIX. If we take a closer look at the airport, runway 36 seems to be a great option for an alternate takeoff in the event of an emergency. Now let's go one step further here and we're gonna click on the airport. We're gonna open up the airport charts and let's take a look at the various approaches that we have. And as you can see here, we do have an ILS to runway 36. So that's gonna be perfect for us to set up an alternate takeoff. For those of you who do not have Navigraph to look up these charts, you can either use skyvector.com, which is for the US, or you can use chartbox.org. Links will all be down in the description. So now that we have decided on our alternate takeoff airport, let's hop into the Cessna 172 so we can get all of this program. All right, so now let's take a look at the flight plan page of the G1000. I've already gone ahead and entered the entire flight plan with the exception of our alternate takeoff procedure. Press in on the inner FMS knob on the lower right. That'll bring up our cursor. We can then use the outer FMS knob to scroll through the flight plan and you will see that we do not have an approach procedure. And that's because we are going to use the approach procedure as our alternate takeoff. Press on the procedure button on the lower right hand corner. Now we're going to select approach. At this point, we need to hit the clear button on the lower right hand corner because we need to change the destination airport at the top. Highlight the airport, click on the little keyboard icon, type in KTIX, hit enter. We're going to choose the ILS 36. 
For an alternate takeoff procedure, I always recommend a vectors transition. And that's because it's going to give you a long line directly out from the runway of the airport. So for this, we'll choose a vectors transition. So we'll hit enter and then we'll scroll all the way down to the load. Also keep in mind that the primary frequency for the ILS is 108.7, which should automatically program into our NAV1 frequency. So we'll hit enter on load, yes to the lawyer language, and we have now entered the alternate takeoff procedure. Now one thing that may alarm you at the very top of your flight plan is you're gonna see the destination airport has changed to KTIX, but that is completely okay if we press in on the inner FMS knob again and scroll through our flight plan. You will see everything is still there in the flight plan with the exception of the alternate takeoff procedure at the very bottom. Now, you may have a question at this point, and that would be, well, what if I don't need my alternate takeoff procedure? and I'm well on my way, everything is good. How do I get my flight plan back to the way it's supposed to be with my actual destination airport? To do that is very simple. Click on the procedure button at the lower right. Once you're here, we can select approach. Again, we're gonna hit the clear button, and then you wanna go up and select your destination airport. Once you do, you will then be able to select the approach you wanna use, hit load, and then it will load the correct destination airport for you. So I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions about that, just let me know down below in the comments. If you look over on the left-hand side, this very long line going into KTIX is the vectors to final approach line. If you enter a final approach fix or an initial approach fix, as you can see here, the farthest out that we would get is going to be the AWINY waypoint. Now, if we were coming from, let's say, KMLB, this waypoint is not going to be far enough out from the airport so that we're going to be able to line ourselves up on the approach course. By using a vectors to final gives us a super long line, so it will make it very easy for us to navigate to the approach course line or the intercept line. All right, before we take off, you want to make sure that you have properly set up your PFD. And with that, we're going to go ahead, full throttle, and get us off the ground. Now, keep in mind that failures can happen at any point in your departure. But for us, we have leveled out and we're gonna simulate an alternator failure. We're gonna contact ATC. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have an electrical failure and need to land now. Now what we need to do is to activate our alternate approach. To do that, we're gonna head over to the G1000. We're gonna press the procedure button. We're going to select activate vectors to final, make sure it's highlighted, and then hit enter. Once you have done that, you will see the vectors to final will populate. You'll also notice that the localizer has populated on the HSI. So we'll just use the heading to navigate us close to the approach course. And I'm also gonna activate nav hold. Now you'll notice that the localizer has lit up in white in our autopilot panel, indicating that once we get close enough to our approach course, the localizer will then take over. Now, as you notice, once we got close enough to the approach course, the localizer has now highlighted in green and heading hold has dropped off. As you can see, the localizer or glide slope has come in. We're gonna activate the approach mode. One other quick tip, if you activate your approach mode when you are above the glide slope, it will never capture that glide slope. You always wanna make sure you are just under the glide slope before you activate your approach mode so that the plane will meet the glide slope as it continues moving forward. All right, I'm gonna cut the autopilot and we're going to manually take it in. Oh, 
All right, folks, that's going to wrap us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.